With the recent two new seasons of Total Drama, we now have 10 products of Total Drama, so... I have something to do a top 10 with. I love top 10s, and... I feel like I really need to update my previous ranking of Total Drama seasons. If you haven't watched that video yet, I recommend that you go back and see it, because I will be referring to it a bit in this video, so... Yeah, that. Let's not spend too much time here, let's just get on with the video. I got one of these things. Better- oh! <clears throat> Better audio for you. Always thinking of you. Was just about done with that USB mic. For my number 10, I picked Total Drama All Stars. After all my constant rants on this season, I feel like I have said all there is to say about Total Drama All Stars. My exact thoughts were all consummated when I did my 10 years of Total Drama All Stars video, so if you really want to hear my opinions, I suggest that you watch that one. So for this video, Total Drama All-Stars gets a freebie. For my number 9, I picked Packy Tail Island. Okay, so this season is definitely a doozy. The cast felt absolutely uninspired, and the season felt absolutely pointless. I already made a video on this season that explains it all, I think, but I can say it here as well. This season was not inspired in any sort of way. Jokes were way too lighthearted and seemed to be afraid of being funny, They've resorted to mud actually being shit jokes four times in total this season, and not a single character was good, even the ones with potential. I must say though, even though we've had now four new iterations of Total Drama after this season, I am now appreciating it just slightly. Even though Terry McGurn is doing a good job as Chris's voice, this one is technically the last time we've heard the voice of Christian Potenza as the original voice of Chris in an official Total Drama bit. No, no Total Drama Rama, please. Pakiteo Island may have been a pointless, boring season, but it was the last piece of classic Total Drama we've had, and that has to count for something, right? Number 8, Total Drama Rama. Ah, uh, the dark stain that kept the Total Drama franchise in the dark ages. Now, a little fact about me. When it comes to animated stuff, I'm very easy to get a laugh from. And when your work can make me laugh while the previous two seasons fails to do that, that tells me that the comedy might be better here. Well, Total Drama Rama is really not a show targeted to my demographic. I cannot place it any higher than this. From what I watched, I can say I actually had a good time watching it, but the latter episodes were kind of a disaster. Even the writers backhandedly admitted that they didn't care about this show towards the end. Total Drama Rama was not something we needed, but it's definitely better put together than some other products than the original Total Drama franchise has put out. Just like the Powerpuff Girls reboot, I can see some qualities in them that would make for an okay show. Had it tried to be a show with original characters and not carryovers, then maybe this would be seen with better eyes. But seeing my beloved cast of characters going through a formula that has been proven not to work well within fandoms, it's just sad. And also, you see, there is this song I love called No Rain from Blind Melon, and I cannot believe that me being a fan of this song since forever, only now I notice that the girl that appears in this clip might have been an inspiration from Beth's design for this show. I cannot believe I've never connected the dots on this one for six years. I Number 7. Total Drama Reboot 2024. Here's the thing, I'll probably will never get down to actually doing a season review because there was nothing groundbreaking happening with this season, so I guess I'll air out what I have to say here. When you compare this season to its ancestor, you can see a drop in quality in terms of narrative. While season 1 of the reboot favored the competition aspect of the show, this season just felt like the million dollars was an afterthought. There was a lot of spotlight placed on characters that had no need for spotlight, and inevitably this results in other characters getting the shaft. The Priya and Caleb plot stretch even longer than Zoe, Mike and Mal, and even though this is covered by how great her relationship with Metal Knight is, having Julia being the root of all evil this season was such a pain. There wasn't a single bad thing that happened this season where Julia didn't have her hand on. It was just a whole caboodle of wasted potential and missed opportunities with this season. But it's not to say that the season was bad. At least there were good moments with the show, here and there. Total Drama Island Reboot 2024 sits on this limbo. It's not bad, but it's not good either. 
it's vanilla. Can you say that you actually go out and eat a vanilla ice cream for your own enjoyment? If you say you do, you're lying to yourself. Stop it. For my number six, I picked total drama action. I'm gonna keep it real with you here. The original choices I made on my previous ranking were a bit influenced by what I was uploading onto YouTube back in those days. The videos I made before my top 8 of seasons were a video essay on why Total Drama Action was not a very good season, 50 things right with Total Drama Reunion, the most serotonin powered video I've ever made, times were rough back then, and another video essay on Total Drama Rama where I say that the show is okay so my choices were a bit influenced by what I had written recently. Three years have passed ever since, and I can say that Total Drama Action has taken back the spot claimed by Total Drama Rama. Yes, the season was a mess of bad decisions, it stars two characters in the first part of the season, only for them not to have a single role in the second part, and none of the finalists actually had a strong role in the second part, so it all just feels like a season that just rolls on for 26 episodes with no cohesiveness. Nonetheless, you can still see a lot of traits of the original Total Drama Island left in there. The quality of animation, the pop culture stuff that was hip back in those days. I like to see Total Drama action as the foundation for Total Drama World Tour. The choices they made with reward challenges, with no, almost no interesting conclusion or lasting impacts, or episodes being filled with aftermaths that have literally zero impact on the game, are eventually reworked in the following season to have an impact on the game. And the lack of bad writing this season is actually very well made up with its comedy. The joke of Duncan having to guess what color Courtney is thinking right now is astonishingly hilarious, and at the end of the day, my favorite Total Drama moment does come from this season. So in the end, Total Drama action has its problems, but I can see how Total Drama action is slightly, just slightly above average. And hey, if Total Drama Action walked so that Total Drama World Tour could fly, then that has to count for something, right? For my number 5, I picked Revenge of the Island. This season was definitely a turning point for the show. For the better, for the worst, you call it. I think we can all see that there was definitely a drop in quality starting with Revenge of the Island, both in terms of aesthetic, character building, plot progression, etc. Nonetheless, this season also sits at a limbo that it might not be the best piece of Total Drama you consume, but unlike Total Drama Reboot 2024, it's very, very far from the worst out there. It definitely has some unspectacular characters compared to the previous cast, but you can see that there is still much better character interactions that we see in the future casts. From the Cameron, Zoe and Mike's friendship, Dawn being the voice of B, Joe and Lightning's dynamic, and Lightning being an egomaniac, boastful and arrogant person, but not being an homophobe, no sir he is not. This cast showed a lot of potential, and it's a bit sad we still haven't gotten some redemption for these characters. Overall, Total Drama Revenge of the Island is a great season. Might not be the most impressive, but great nonetheless. For my number 4, I picked Total Drama Island Reboot 2023. Okay, so this season has to be one of the best reboots I've seen in all my years. I don't know if you've ever experienced this before, but when you work too much into your craft, you may notice that eventually you are just producing stuff with no love for what you are doing. However, when you take a break away from this craft, you will notice that when you actually come back to this craft, after your break, you have much more passion and you are working on it much more fluidly. This was the kind of feeling that was transmitted with this season. Whoever is making Total Drama really needed some time away from producing it year after year. The rushness of it all was not ambiguous. In terms of why this season feels so good, is that they made some things in it that are actually kind of hindi when you talk about the standard Total Drama season. This was the first and so far only season that did not have a love relationship being a strong focus in the story. There was Bowie and Raj that outright agreed to put it on pause for after the game, and then there was Emma and Chase that looked more like a comic relief interaction more than anything. Other than that, this season made something that is very reminiscent of the original Total Drama Island, which is that this narrative should be focused around that this is a game. Interactions in this season are very centered around the fact that there was a million dollars up for grabs. The characters show that that's what they are here for, which is something that feels like an afterthought with the Mal and Zoe plot in Total Drama All-Stars when you look at it, and I knew I could not resist taking a jab at All-Stars, I just knew it. Overall, Total Drama Island Reboot 2023 was a great Total Drama season, and I have to admit, if this is the way they are heading with the franchise, I have to say the future looks bright. It's a shame that all the hard work and passion went clearly into this season, because the following season felt a bit more rushed than this one. But hey, 
they had to write these back to back. So I'll look at this season as a shining example that if you give the creators a total drama some time, they will deliver a good show undoubtedly. And this was not the first time they showcased this. For my number 3, Total Drama Island. Honestly, my thoughts on this season have remained unchanged over the past 3 years. Total Drama Island still stands as one of the best seasons of the franchise. If you want to listen to my opinion, I would recommend checking my previous ranks because I really don't want to repeat myself. I guess this concludes Total Drama Island. For my number 2, The Redonkulous Race. Oh yeah, what a very fresh and needed revamp to the franchise. Sometimes it's a bit hard to accept change, so when you see that a Total Drama show isn't even having Chris anymore, people were not having it. But after watching it, this show is a true nail-biter. If they had picked better the characters that would sit at the bottom too in some episodes, every single episode would have been amazing. This format of Total Drama is definitely something I wish that was given more love by the community, because I believe that the format of just doing the survivor type of show was actually becoming rather stale to watch. The Redonkulous Race was a very welcome addition to the show and I wish that they used this format more often. I appreciate it as well that they brought back some older cast of characters but they never take away the spotlight from the newer characters. Overall, The Redonkulous Race was a season of balance, fun, good writing and fast-paced writing and again proves that the people in charge of Total Drama can put out great shows if they are given some time. Examples of great characters that came from this cast are the Ice Skaters, Sisters, MacArthur, Vegans, Geniuses and especially the Goths. I want more of the Goths. I love the Goths. Please, more Goths. And, judging by what's left, I think you've probably guessed by now that my number one is still Total Drama World Tour. Ah, Total Drama World Tour, one of the most amazing seasons of this show, no doubt. I think that the reason why this season is to me one of the best ones is because it is the right amount of dramatic. Every single episode seems to have an impact on the conclusion. I feel like Alejandro definitely was one of the best villains this season. You might be thinking, uh, he was also the root of all evil this season and you said this was something that bad in 2024 reboot with Julia. Okay. But, you know, his acts were written subtly. Like, if something bad happens to a character because of Alejandro, you can tell that this will happen in the spam of a few episodes. Not immediately, just because Julia feels like it. One episode is all it takes and it feels so rushed. Alejandro's eliminations, on the other hand, just brew. He is also the cause of bad things that happen, but it's a slow-cooked death. It's a very interesting dynamic all throughout. The satisfying conclusion of this season happens no matter what finale you are watching, because we also see the character redemption arc that Heather goes through this season as well. Being stuck on a team filled with people that hate her, Two of them bond so much over their common hatred for her, to the point that when the coin flips, all the attention is deflected away from Heather. We also see Heather showing for the first time some sort of weakness rather than her vanity. The result is that when we get to the final, all we have left is a formerly hated person and a currently hated person. How do we choose? Both of them had great strategies. If you are watching Heather's ending, we see the lesser of two evils triumph and see a crowd of people that formerly hate her cheer on her. They may hate Heather, but I think that, unspokenly, they knew that if there was anyone that could take Alejandro down, was the Queen Bee. If you are watching Alejandro's ending, you are treated to a sudden twist that is actually very common to see in Total Drama humor. It's an ending that kills us on the inside, and it somehow makes us laugh. Total Drama World Tour reminds me of those books that have one story on the right side, so you just need to read the right pages, and another on the left, so you just need to read the left pages. And the end of the book, both stories end up matching. So, to sum it all up, Total Drama World Tour is structured in a very organized way and no other season of this show have matched this amount of great writing. The only downside of this whole thing was Duncan, but I feel like even he was kinda needed to steer some drama. Just feel like he could have left on the episode in Area 51 and nothing would have been lost. And there you have it, top 10 seasons of Total Drama. Overall, Total Drama has been through a lot since 2007, and I'm glad we are currently living a new age of Total Drama. Will we ever get 10 more seasons? I honestly don't know. I'm just gonna cut myself off here because if I continue, this will seem like padding. Thank you. Bye.